starting a business takes a lot of guts. Starting a business in Hawaii, you must be crazy. In this show, we'll introduce you to the bold individuals chasing the American dream in my hometown of Honolulu, Hawaii. So sit back, relax, and welcome to paradise. I'm your host, Nikki Nocturnal, and I'm here with... Jonathan and Bradley here. Okay, guys, so let's start with a little lightning round to kind of loosen things up, you know, have fun. Okay, so I'm going to say a word, and you just say the first thing that pops into your head. Okay. Okay? All right. Ready? You ready? Ready, set? Okay. okay. Paradise. Island. Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha shirt. Uh... That rack. <laughs> Vintage? Mm. Chinatown. Um, food. Fantastic. Mm. Favorite era? Um, 70s. 60s. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> We're going to have to talk about this later. I know, I know there's like a disagreement. <laughs> the 60s. 60s. <laughs> Style icon. David Bowie. Um, Pass. <laughs> we'll come I back to this later. Three. The party of vintage. Uh, Bradley's mama. Oh, my no. mom. Just kidding, my mom. <laughs> 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 no, it's a nice Sorry, thing to say. Yeah. It's a good. It's a good association. Nice love, lady. love. Yes. Chic. Chic. Um, Bradley's mama. <laughs> there you go, that made up for the last one. <laughs> Favorite cocktail? Oh, God. Mm, whiskey soda. Mm. I feel like I just switched to vodka soda with a glass of wine. So, cheers. Happy cheers. New Year's, oh, guys. Gosh, happy New Year. Yay. Yay. Mm. So, I guess just tell me how you guys got started in the thrift business. It's such an interesting line to go into. Yeah, it's something that we've both really been interested in um, before moving to Hawaii. Jonathan worked with antiques before, mm -hmm. and then I specifically worked with clothing. Okay. Um, and just something I think that, like, if you love so much, you just really, it kind of follows you. And so we moved out here, still with that sort of like sentiment, and had a lot of like stuff we collected, and then just had been like avid collectors in general. Um, and from that, really, just sort of like, I don't know, just came to be, which was really cool. Something that we didn't per se like anticipate, but surrounding ourselves with it so much really did. Um, Yeah, it wasn't something we planned to do, it was definitely something that we moved here doing different jobs and it was like more of a hobby, but it was really cool to see people enjoying our hobby and sharing it, so it was definitely motivation to keep doing more and moving to different spaces and different pop-ups. And now we're here and we like this little home for Barrio. That's awesome. See, I like that you say pop-up because I was just going to touch on that with how starting a business in Hawaii can be difficult, but I feel like if you kind of know what you want to do and you turn a hobby that's a passion into a career, everything kind of flows and you figure out how to make it work. And in an industry like Hawaii that's very difficult to start a business, how did you feel people or other entities helped you guys get well, to where you we are? We honestly just, yeah, upon moving out here and then sort of doing our, um, like, yeah, starting with like little pop-ups, like, had such great support from the community, specifically mm -hmm. Chinatown, which was amazing. Um, and really the entire time had so much organicism to it and really didn't, um, we never anticipated opening up a storefront or doing pop-ups for like a lucrative purpose or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but just in doing it, I mean, it just kind of like builds momentum from there and then one thing kind of leads to the other. And so at some point in time, we just were sitting in our living room and had so much stuff and so, uh, and then the storefront came to fruition, which is really cool. And like, here, I mean, there is a little infrastructure in the community, like of Art and Flea, that was totally a great venue for us to just like do our initials, like sampling of what we were trying to do. And then like first Friday at the Artist Loss, we had like tons of success just right out of our own loft that we were renting there. 
Yeah, and just a lot of people that were in like the downtown community that were really interested in um, vintage and secondhand and thrift and kind of like a fashion exchange. Mm -hmm. um, and so like really after our first pop-up, we had people kind of approaching us to donate things or sell us things, That's which awesome. was really cool. And so really, yeah, like after day one, it kind of picked up momentum, which was really, really cool. That's really lucky great. about that. Well, that's so neat to see an idea kind of come to life and definitely having a community that's supportive of your passion. Yeah. It's great. It's great to see that. Yeah. And I do see that in the Chinatown community a lot. Absolutely. Um, yeah, a lot of like really unique ideas that just get great support from the community and yeah. continue to flourish, which is really fabulous. Definitely. So, um, so I guess an interesting thing too with thrift to still kind of keep that going. Uh, Sophie Amoruso, I, you guys know Nasty Gal? Oh yeah. Oh, so I just read Girl Boss. I loved it. And what I noticed was she she started her entire brand, her empire, through thrift. How have you noticed going the thrift route has really... How has that been for you guys? Why did you choose the thrift route specifically? Um, I think it was just something that we both did all the time. I mean, we, like, when we lived back on the mainland in Tucson, that's, we lived in the thrift stores. I mean, anytime we ever travel anywhere, even before the business, we would always be thrifting. I feel like um, it just was something that we had already been involved in. And being, like, I mean, I grew up going to Savers and going to, like, the Goodwill. Um, my grandma's yard sale buddy. So. <laughs> yeah, and I think like you you do that enough that you eventually do kind of like find like a value in things. So you, you can kind of make sense of this giant like store full of stuff and see kind of like what is the gold and like what appeals to you, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, it was cool and too like where we are from Tucson initially, it's really rich with vintage, and so the thrift mm -hmm. scene there is really like vintage riddled um, got to see a lot of cool stuff all the time which is really amazing and even still I mean we go back out there for our buying trips every yeah. three months or so that's it that's fun and you guys yeah. are going on one coming up soon yeah we'll be next week actually which is really cool oh, so we'll really spend a couple exciting. weeks on the mainland yeah sourcing around and that's, that's great. I mean that's so neat um, I mean that's our passion to like walk into a store and then kind of like skim through and find some really beautiful pieces That's so and the luck of that hunt is really cool too because you find exactly. that thing and you're like oh my god it's, there's so many fun yeah. aspects to it it's like okay I'm getting a bargain yeah I'm looking for things I'm learning it you learn about the history of fashion in a sense because you see everything from things that were you know recent like 2015 yeah. all the way to yeah. Whenever it's it depends on what you find. Intact. Yeah, it depends yeah, on what you find. Yeah. Victorian yeah. things. Yeah. Victorian things. Yeah. I mean, it, it is. And that's so cool because you can just walk in a space and all of a sudden you find something from like the turn of the century. It just blows <laughs> your mind. And because vintage is so unique and so one of a kind, you just yeah. really know, like, never know what you're gonna find. Ooh. Well, on that note, what's the most interesting thing you found while thrifting? Um, mm. I have a couple. Like that we found, the Victorian thing we found fairly recently was like this Victorian gown that was um, made into a costume by Warner Brothers in like the 1940s. So it already nice. had like a few decades of life before it was made into a costume. Mm -hmm. It had like its um, movie theater tag in it. And there was just like, we didn't really sell it in the store because it doesn't really fit our vibe of like mm -hmm. 60s, 70s, wild retro. But we, when we threw it online, like it had a lot of interest and like, it was just, it was a neat piece. I like that one. That was a really cool one. We found something interesting recently that was a piece of Disneyland sort of history. Oh. And I guess Disneyland used to have a garment section and also a textile section. Okay. Um, and there was just like beautiful novelty fabrics and stuff from the 50s and 60s that are like immensely desirable because people are Disney freaks. Collectors. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like the uniform from the Tiki. Yeah, it was from the Tiki uh, room. The Tiki room. Oh, just covered in birds, and it was just really beautiful. And so, yeah, 1960s dress, it was really cool. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't wait for you to try this on. Yes. This little 60s guy, bark cloth, handmade in Hawaii. <sighs> yeah, this material is called bark cloth. It was super popular. So it was so originally durable. actually made out of bark, and then eventually turned it into cotton. Really? Yeah, when you're styling it with people, I mean, a lot of the stuff is custom made, or like the sizing scale was entirely different back in the day. Um, and so to find somebody now that their style, their personal style aesthetic matches the garment and they also fit the garment, it's almost like matching a puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's I like guess. fashion matchmaking. That's the business you're in with really vintage. Is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think like 
what makes us different than a lot of other vintage businesses is that we focus on that and we like focus on the wearability of things and making it I mean like we want you to buy something we want you to wear it and we want you to like photograph it and like really enjoy it and love it. The three tips if you had to condense it into your most like if I were to go home now taking one of these beautiful outfits with me how would I take care of it? I would say like honestly um, anytime you throw anything in the washing machine it's mm -hmm. just like a crazy machine that like spindles around and twist things up and so you consider like <laughs> the threading on that is like 50 years old and so huh. probably don't want to like throw it in the wash and so like hand wash it, um, hang dry it and steam it like don't okay. iron your garments either like use like a steam cleaner Interesting. for it. And I would say like number one thing if you're going home right now go to your closet in the darkest spot and there's clothes they haven't worn for a while uh -huh. like take them out and just shake <gasps> them and, like, let them see light <laughs> yeah, let them because if there's dirt on them at all it will turn to rust like with the moisture in the air so, yeah like, it's weird being in such a like yeah. moist climate because uh -huh. yeah like anything that lands like on the garment like, it can turn yeah. into rust and so you'll just have like immense rust or like moisture stains yeah, like, wow. yeah and that is and that's like why you'll see like things turn like a little bit yellowy sheer yeah I Ooh, love it. Yeah. Cool. Let's try it Our on. for styling me that was fun oh gosh, squeezing into some of those outfits <laughs> awesome uh, thanks for wearing it oh yeah I love it I mean of course <laughs> rocking barrio it's natural <laughs> so I guess just to kind of close things out what's the future of barrio um, you know I think we're always going to just have aims to grow I think like for us um, to get more stuff into the store, to like source more inventory is always in the future. And then I think from there really expand um, the ways we can kind of supply that to people. Continue mm -hmm. having fun. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a big fashion show again this year. Yeah. Be announced sometime summer. You'll know and all about there's it. another special surprise that? with a hand There's something that's happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's actually Ooh, a lot of things in store for this year that we're like Ooh. yet to display. Special so surprises. Surprise. Yeah, we're all <gasps> Fashion. Oh, this is exciting. So we're really looking forward to it. Fashion is not about utility. An accessory is merely a piece of iconography used to express individual identity. The devil wears Prada. Being a girl on the go, I'll admit sometimes I can get lazy when it comes to dressing myself. Thank goodness hobo chic is now a thing. Instead of taking the time to carefully browse through racks of the season's finest, I'll usually end up settling for whatever looks good on the mannequins at Forever 21. But today at Barrio Vintage, I learned how exhilarating it can be when you find the perfect match. Each item transcends the rack, and before my eyes, a story unfolds. Brightly colored mini dress, but a great costume for a flower power party. Ornate clip-on earrings, I think of my grandmother in the 60s. A vintage set of McDonald's coffee mugs, speechless. Thrifting is not just economical, it's an experience. Here at Barrio, locals can choose from clothes thoughtfully selected from different regions of the mainland's west coast, all thanks to savvy buyers Jonathan and Bradley. So if you're in Chinatown, make sure you check out Barrio. There's something waiting behind their doors just for you.